Red Sea attacks continue to disrupt shipping with retailers IKEA and Abercrombie and Fitch flagging concerns over possible supply disruption. Our next guest knows these waterways well and was involved in assembling a task force to fight Somali pirates off the Horn of Africa. Joining us right now is retired U.S. Navy Admiral James Stavridis, who is a former NATO Supreme Allied Commander. He's now Carlyle Group's Global Affairs Vice Chair and an NBC News Chief International Analyst. And, uh, Admiral, thank you. Um, you know these waters well because you were the commodore of a squadron of a destroyers there. You did several deployments as captain of a destroyer. And you led a carrier stri strike group in this region, too, not to mention fighting off pirates. So is this mission one that you think can be successful? Uh, it can be successful. And 10 years ago, you may vaguely remember, Becky, we had a whole series of attacks, uh, not by these Houthi rebels who are backed by Iran, at that time, 10 years ago, it was Somali pirates on yeah, the coast of Africa. You might remember that. Yeah. It was quite severe, caused real supply chain disruptions. Ultimately, we beat them back with a combination of military force, uh, activity ashore, as well as private-public cooperation between NATO, European Union, and the big shipping companies. It can be done, but it's challenging. Well, let, let's talk about that on a couple of fronts. As you mentioned, these were just Somali pirates before. I remember the yeah. video footage. They used to just come up with uh, little speedboats and, and, yeah. and board the big uh, shipping container fleets that were going through. Yeah. These are rebels that are backed by Iran. Mm -hmm. Should we first assume that they are going to be better militarily equipped than the Somali pirates than, that who were there before? Indeed. And just look at the video you're showing. That could be a Navy SEAL team. They are very capable, very well trained. By contrast, your point, think about the movie Captain Phillips, where these kind of emaciated looking pirates scurry up because this is a whole different level of threat. It's going to require a bigger response. And, and oh, by the way, the Red Sea, this enormous body of water, it's the size of the state of California. So even if you put 20 warships in there, 20 destroyers, it's like trying to patrol California with 20 police cars. It's a big challenge. The other issue mentioned is that even with the Somali pirates, that required um, going to land to, to take out some of the places where they were launching from. That risks a, a real issue just in terms of inflaming the whole situation in the Middle East. The United States has been working very hard to try and keep uh, the, the war from spreading beyond Israel and Gaza. What happens if you actually touch down and you're now landing in Yemen to do some of these things with a proxy for Iran? How does that not conflate the issue and spread beyond? Oh, it would. And that, I think, is the ultimate concern for all of us as investors. Um, if this thing goes high order, and recall, Becky, in the wake of the attack by Hamas on October 7th, the U.S. has two nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, 80 combat aircraft each, squadrons of the Air Force, 2,000 Marines. It's a lot of U.S. firepower in that region. It's there to deter Iran, which is the puppet master of these Houthi rebels who are conducting these operations. So you put your finger on the real danger from an investment perspective. I'll give you my cut as I look at it. I think it's only, I put that in air quotes, a 10% chance, maybe 15% chance that it Yikes. goes high order. But that's uncomfortably high uh, because ultimately it would require strikes ashore. That would perhaps lead Iran to respond. Then you're in a very dangerous situation. Let's hope we can contain this thing at sea. Yeah, that, that doesn't scare me as an investor. That scares me as a, a citizen as a, yeah. and as a human for what that means for the rest of the world. Exactly I'll tell you what right. concerns me as, as an investor is <coughs> trying to figure out what this is going to mean for commodities prices, what this is going to mean yeah. for the global supply chain, because even if we're saying we're going to do this, the shipping companies like Maersk and others are saying, OK, show me first, because for now we're going to go around the Cape of Good Horn. It's going to take a lot longer to get things here. Second of all, even if they decide they want to go ahead with that, um, it's going to cost a lot more to insure those ships. That jumped up overnight from something, you know, 50 times what they were paying before this whole idea. And that is going to mean higher shipping costs, and that's going to work inflation through. Uh, you've, you've described it perfectly. And 
uh, we ought to, for that reason alone, setting aside the geopolitical implications you address correctly, uh, setting those aside, we ought to be getting after this. We, NATO, we, the European Union, we, our Asian allies, uh, regional powers. We need to get the Saudis, who own a big chunk of that Red Sea coast, um, into the game against these Houthi rebels. And they've been fighting them already down in Yemen. So there's plenty of coalition there that could go after this. But it's it's a matter of orchestrating it, getting it in the right places, building the intelligence picture, responding at sea, hopefully so we don't have to go ashore. Ultimately, Becky, I'll finish with this. Ultimately, in Somalia, we did have to go ashore and take out some of these uh, pirate camps to discourage that operation. I hope we don't get to that point because it nudges the U.S. and Iran toward conflict. Don't think we'll end up there, but it is definitely one to watch. I mean, this feels like a, a situation where it's everybody except the Houthi rebels in Iran. I mean, this is terrible for yeah. Egypt because something like a huge amount of their tax revenue comes from the Panama Canal. This shuts down any ships from being able to get there. Um, yeah. it just, I can't think of anybody outside of Iran who wants this to happen. Uh, the only other actor I could name in that sense would be Russia, which would benefit from uh, higher oil prices, and Venezuela, who would as well. But shutting down the Suez Canal would absolutely choke international shipping. Uh, as you showed in a graphic a moment ago, 15 to 20 percent of the world's shipping goes through there. Got to keep that open.